Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Sydney Fong and I graduated from the University of California Davis with a bachelor's degree. I have the pleasure of working as the lead clinical research coordinator at Innovative Skin Science and Research. My presentation today is on how systemic isotretinoin and topical tretinoin modulate the sebum lipidome in acne. This is the results of a prospective controlled study. Within the US, acne is actually the most common inflammatory condition amongst adolescents and young adults. Although there are many different factors that can contribute to acne, one well-established factor is the increased activity of sebaceous glands. Topical and systemic retinoids are considered standard treatments for acne, but several studies have already shown that they actually do not alter the quantity of sebum secreted. Hmm. And that brings us to the goal of our study, which is to investigate how topical tretinoin and systemic isotretinoin modulate the skin lipidome and lipid mediator profile. And in particular, we're looking at eicosanoids. This study was conducted on 31 subjects between the ages of 12 and 30 diagnosed with acne who were to receive either topical tretinoin or systemic isotretinoin from the dermatologist. Patients prescribed tretinoin for mild to moderate acne, and those prescribed isotretinoin for moderate to severe acne were recruited before they initiated treatment. The control group was matched to the acne subjects by age and gender, just to compare baseline values. And then both of our control and tretinoin groups were seen at baseline and one month post baseline, while the isotretinoin group was seen at baseline, one month post baseline, and four to five months post baseline. And this brings us to our first set of figures. This shows our control group lipid profile from baseline compared to one month post baseline. As you can see, there were no significant changes between these two visits which is to be expected. Um, this is pretty apparent when you look at cluster four and five and three. And then next, looking at the lipid profile of our tretinoin treatment group between baseline and one month post baseline, you can see a general trend. Overall, the lipid profile of our tretinoin group has shifted and in many cases decreased to become more similar to the baseline control group. You can see that really, really clearly in clusters three, four, and five. And this is even better seen in this next figure, where we focus in on some of the icosinoids that have normalized after one month of topical trenoin use. Next up, we have our isotrenoin treatment group. Very similar to the trenoin treatment group, we see after one month post baseline, several of the lipid mediators have shifted towards normalization. For our isotretinoin group, we also have a follow-up four to five months post baseline. As you can see, many of these clusters demonstrate a continuous trend. This is better demonstrated in our next figure, which shows the partial correction of several eicosanoids after one month and four to five months of treatment with isotretinoin. All in all, our findings support that isotretinoin and tretinoin alter and partially correct the skin sebum lipidome and reduce the presence of inflammatory eicosanoids in adolescents and adults with acne. One of the key takeaways of the study is the importance of the skin lipidome and the modulation and reduction of the inflammatory eicosanoids. And that may be the, well, at least one of the mechanisms of actions for retinoids. This actually brings us to a very last slide where I've shared my email address. If you have any questions regarding the study, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you so much for joining me today. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Bye-bye now.